Yo, 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 what's going on? It is the NRW, where nerds rule the world. It's your boy, Kuya P, a.k.a. Patrick Michael Strange. And I'm back with another amazing interview for you all, my good people here on the NRW, where nerds rule the world. Uh, I've been, uh, I- I'm a new fan. I'm a huge fan now. I've been binging all day. I, I booked this amazing interview through the good folks over at NBC Universal. Thank you, NBC. Can't thank you enough for supporting the channel. Um, Maureen Barucha. Uh, she uh, did this amazing film that I saw not too long ago called Golden Arm. I got reacquainted with the film uh, again today to, to get prepared for this. And she also directed an amazing episode of Saved by the Bell, which is a classic to me. Uh, I love the, the old series and this new series. I didn't check it out until now. And now seeing this particular episode that she did and just how they're mixing the old with the new and just the messaging is still there. I'm now going to go binge uh, the rest of the Saved by the Bell episode soon. And also, I'm going to be checking out a film called Fatal Flipped that I found out when doing my research on Marine that she did on Lifetime, combining uh, home uh, renovations that I used to love and home selling and also murder mysteries. I got to know all about that. We're going to talk to her now. I'm going to shoot off the air ones. Let me bring her up on the screen. I got to talk to her. I'm just super excited with this interview for you today. Here she is on the screen, Marine Barucha Airhorn. I'm not going to deafen you, Maureen. It's going to be there in post. Thank you for joining me today to talk about you and celebrating you and giving you some flowers. I'm excited. Oh, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> As if you're going to tell. Yeah, I, I, I do a lot of interviews all the time, but then when you find somebody that you can connect with in their spirit, uh, again, doing a, uh, some research today, I was listening to interviews that you did uh, on my drive home from the office and, and seeing that like you love Wayne's World. And, and I want to talk about that as well. Like, can we get you to like do that? The remake, maybe, possibly, who knows? Um, and <laughs> I mean, just everything hey, you're all about. You're saying I, you're putting it out there. I'll, I'll do it. <laughs> yes, let's put it into the universe. Hollywood, holla at my girl here. Give it to her. Um, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for your time. Let's start off uh, with what you got you here. And again, shout out to NBC. Uh, on Peacock, say by the bell, they're back with it. Uh, I was a big fan of the original series, and now they have this amazing new series, and you directed uh, an episode that I got a chance to look at that, uh, as a POC, uh, that talked on, you know, uh, how the, 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 one of the characters uh, is uh, the, the Mendez is, uh, oh my gosh, Slater. Uh, you know, his, I never knew that his last name was Sanchez. And we have this character that, uh, along with his Dominican character, that learns that, you know, their teacher is kind of you know, kind of teaching him in his own way, but not respecting her way and what she grew up with. Um, I love that voice that was put in there. Uh, can you just, again, tell me about getting involved with this project and and uh, kind of infusing your own stuff as a mixed kid as well? Yeah, I mean, I was so lucky to be part of NBC Universal's Female Forward program this year. And that's kind of what led me to Say by the Bell. I got to meet with Tracy Wigfield, who has, is such a brilliant mind. And I was also a huge Say by the Bell fan growing up. So her reimagining of Saved by the Bell is so incredible. Uh, it was I was so lucky to have this episode. This is the one that I got to direct, and I connected on it on such a deep level because, yeah, it's kind of it's one, it's funny. Two, it's talking about something that I think you know. What's so great is that the granular part of it is so specific. The specifics of it are very you know true, but the universal message is kind of what I connected to as well. Is like being somebody that you know, is mixed. So people don't realize like I'm a part of that community or I'm doing my culture wrong or you're not doing it the right way. And I think there's so many uh, themes that are in this episode that relate to that. And I think everybody can kind of glom onto something. I love it. I love it. Um, And uh, again, as I said, I was doing some homework on you and and about how representation is so important to you. Uh, Can you tell me just about uh, as you've gone into this business and then you had this opportunity to work on the Saved by the Bell episode, um, uh, getting that voice in projects and uh, collaborating with the writers that put this uh, particular episode together and, and translating that and working with the actors on, on this particular episode. Yeah. Again, Victoria and Marcos who wrote this episode one, I think it's, it's so brilliant and it's so specific. And for me, it was really like talking with them and listening to them about what this episode meant to them and kind of how they infused, you know, things that have happened to them in their real life into this episode. So that was like really exciting was one, just to kind of get to learn something that I kind of didn't know about before, you know, Mm. the the specificity of what it feels like to be a Spanish speaker in a class that like 
is not really for you, or, you know, you're being told the way you speak at home or your culture is not the right one. Um, so I think it was one just about listening. And I think that's also what great television can do. It can entertain you. And then it can kind of tell you something if you're listening. So that was really exciting for me. Hell yeah. Kudos again to the writers. Cause I loved how that message was presented within that you got to laugh, but then you also, it really hit you in the head. Um, and the nuance of it is so, yeah. I mean, that was one thing that was so interesting is, you know, I don't speak Spanish, but when, with Victoria and Marcos, I was like, jump in if something's not right. Or like, let me know because, because the nuance of like, which dialect, which Spanish word was being used at any one time is it's, it was just a testament. It really felt like a team. It really felt like a team effort. And it was so amazing. That's what I love about movies and TV is just the collaborative nature of it. So to be able to get to work together with them, it felt so exciting. And with Aisha and Haskiri as well in the episode and bringing their real life experiences to, to the roles as well. I love it. Kudos again on them in the cast handling that. So you are a Saved by the Bell fan. So what was it like meeting Slater, meeting everybody involved with this uh, and uh, working on this episode? Uh, any special I mean, moments? I, I had a special moment where, one, yes, I was such a huge fan. I watched the show when I was a kid, like every Saturday morning. It was de it definitely, I'm definitely that that demo from the old days and was very excited about the new reimagination. So one, I was just a fan of kind of what they've done. But being on set and like actually like doing my prep work in the max, I like kind of had like my head exploded because I was like, this is so crazy. I'm like sitting in my childhood, you know, ideal you know, cafe doing the work for the show. So that was just really exciting just to see the sets, first of all. And then, yeah, to be able to work with like Mario and Elizabeth was so incredible. They're so great. And, you know, they've worked with those characters for years. So the, to be able to evolve a character from high school to adulthood is very really special. And it's really cool to kind of see what, they, what they've done with the characters. I love it. Is there a possibility you would revisit that? Uh, if we, if they hopefully expands to further more seasons? I mean, maybe you'd have to like check out. I mean, that's the thing people got to keep watching. We got to, we got to get. Oh, heck season. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there, so before I leave, say by the bell, uh, because you are a fan and you got to work on this particular episode. Uh, is there uh, any dreamscape or storyline that you would like to see or and that would exist within now that you would like to maybe see down the road? If you get I mean, back on it. I mean, I, yeah. One thing I love is this, the new batch of kids on the show are just so funny so I think what's great is that you kind of have Easter eggs of the past, but the new, the new class into these new actors are so incredible. So I just want to keep seeing stories from their perspective. I, you know, that's, what's so great about it is that you can still love the old one, but it's a new show. It's a different, it's a different generation and they have, they have different takes on things and they're, you know, they're, they're dealing with the issues. They're dealing with real life. They're dealing with all the things that we dealt with, but in just a different way. So I'm just excited for more stories from them. I completely agree. Uh, they have their own spark. They, they have touches of what we know and love, but they have a uniqueness of their own. So and shout it, out to NBC again yeah. for and this opportunity. Yeah, getting to work with Aisha, I want to see more storylines from her because it was so exciting oh, yeah. to see her storyline this season. So, Oh, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm in. I'm in. I'm going to be binging it all, NBC. Thank you, Peacock. Everybody, check out Saved by the Bell uh, on your Peacock. Uh, subscribe. Uh, it's so good. And uh, Maureen, you did an outstanding job. And uh, I love how, again, how you got to chance to work on it and knowing your passions as a filmmaker with the type of stories you want to tell that you got to do this particular episode. That's outstanding. And so uh, I was happy to see that a film that I had saw before I booked this interview regarding the Saved by the Bell is you worked on Golden Arm. Uh, I caught wind of it uh, through the various filmmaking community that I deal with. And I think through sag After, I think we had a screening that you did with them as well. Uh, can you tell me a little bit about Golden Arm, uh, another project that is hilarious, by the way? Oh, I mean, I everybody working on that movie was like a dream. It was we we shot it in 2019 in the summer of Oklahoma in the heat. Um, but it was like making movies with all my friends, you know, Mary Hall and Bessie Sidaro, Ron Funches, Eugene Cordero, my brother Ahmed's in it, Dot Jones, Don Luby. It was it, Kate Flannery. It was literally just making, you know, on set it felt like magic. It felt like we were mad making, you know, capturing magic in a bottle. Um, it's, it's so near and dear to my heart and it's so much fun. And again, it's something where you get to see people be like they've never been before. And that's, what's so great is everybody in that movie got to play a character that they don't necessarily always get to play. Oh, that's so, beautiful. I, I love that. As an actor, again, we get, we, I get typecast a lot. I get a lot of thug roles, you know, I, I get a little bit of this that, and the third, but so to get play against type, that's beautiful. Um, 
I, I love that, the hilarity. That is just so awesome. And when I did research on you, you come from Jimmy Kimmel Live, uh, Upright Citizens Brigade. Uh, is that like your niche, if you will? What, what do you think is like, <laughs> what is Maureen Barucha and, and everything you want to do? Like, are you, uh, are you telling the stories you want to tell? Are you getting to where you, the point you want in your career? Uh, with filmmaking? Getting to where I want to go. I mean, you know, what's always hard is, you know, you, you do comedy and we've done comedy and I love comedy. It's definitely, I definitely want to explore other genres. And that's kind of why a lot of my movies do straddle the two, you know, usually, you know, Golden Arm is a comedy and a sports movie and a road trip movie. And then I'm doing a new movie that's like a comedy and a thriller, but I love genre. I love action. I love sci-fi. Um, and so I always think it's great to be able to infuse two things because then you come up with an interesting tone. And so for me, I think my brand is like kind of straddling two worlds to create this interesting tonal balance. And a lot of times it's comedy, but it's something else. And that's when I think it really is exciting is when you have your foot planted in reality, you can still laugh, you can still cry, but it kind of, it gives you all the different layers and it gives you, it surprises you. So right now I am focusing more on comedy, but I definitely have some like darker things coming down the pipeline. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So I know one of your upcoming projects is The, the Prank. Uh, can yes. You give us maybe some information on that. I know you just, I think, wrapped, I saw on your IG, uh, I think you just wrapped a little bit up on, on some of the sound, I think. Uh, yeah, we're we're in the home stretch. We're doing color and we're mixing the movie, but it's called The Prank. It's a comedy thriller. It stars Rita Moreno, who is, you know, an icon, a legend, just an incredible human being. Uh, and it's, she's getting to play a role like you've never seen her play before, which is so fun. Um, but it also stars Keith David, Connor Collapsis, and Ramona Young. So it, it's kind of like a cross-generational kind of thing. Um, but we had so much when we shot it this summer and uh, I can't wait for people to see it. It's, it's going to be, it's going to, it's just like entertaining and fun. Oh man. Again, I'm addicted because you have there's certain filmmakers that, you know, you can see their sense and then I've kind of, it kind of carries through on other projects. So like with Saved by the Bell and Golden Arm, like, I, I love this flavor. And, and then when you mentioned Fatal Flip, right? so you did a, a interview, uh, or I don't know if it was an interview, you were more mainly talking yourself uh, on it. I forgot what it was. I think it was on your site. But um, you mentioned a film called Fatal Flip. Uh, as I said earlier, my wife and I, when we're just chilling, it's like uh, home renovation, home selling stuff. Uh, but then I also like horror a little bit and she's not too much, but I think Fatal Flip might be able to be that film that I can have her watch that kind of crosses that, you mm -hmm. know, where she'll get, you know, the, the home stuff she loves, but then also some stuff I love. Uh, what was that like? Uh, I, I have to ask uh, on Lifetime. It was so much fun. You know, it was like a, we, it was like a indie thriller that ended up getting sold to Lifetime. And it was, I love those kind of old, like it, to me, it was like Pacific Heights. <laughs> It's like, I don't know, like that kind that kind of like malice or like those kinds of movies. I feel like that they're not making anymore for like theaters, but that's kind of the genre of movie that I thought it was fun to dabble in. I co-wrote it and it was, it was just a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun to be scary. And um, I kind of think of it as like my Roger Corman, because there's a lot of movies that came from Our Vista. A lot, they're, they were giving women a lot of opportunities to make features. And so it's like, you definitely like, learned how to make a, a movie in a short amount of time. And that's kind of what I did. I had like 15 days to shoot it. Um, and all the acting in it is so much fun. And it was, it was my first feature uh, experience. So it was oh, a lot awesome. of fun. Yeah. I got to see it. I got to, I, I have a tab open right now. I'm going to try and find that. I, I want to see. It's definitely it. a so. good time. It's like, you know, it's a specific working within a box, but it's like, it's fun. And it has some fun references in there. <laughs> I love it. Again, you like uh, when you I became a fan uh, today, 100 uh, percent. Oh, my gosh. Thank you. Your work's amazing. Thank you. Uh, I even want to see these shorts. You did your work with Sprinkle Cupcakes. And uh, yeah, you that's shorts. Exactly that sounds right. amazing. I love cut it. Cut my teeth, cut my teeth, eating cupcakes and making cupcake movies. Um, it has to be the best. <laughs> it was it a was lot more so fun than fun. some of the stuff I do. <laughs> yeah. that's like what I did when I first kind of came to LA after film school is I worked at Sprinkles and then convinced them to give me a job making short films. So they moved me over to corporate and I made branded content for them for quite a few years uh, and actually left Sprinkles for Kimmel to go direct segments on that show. But, and I did my movies for lifetime while I was working at Sprinkles. So I would take time off from Sprinkles, go make a movie, come back, make more cupcake movies. And I did that for like five years before I got on Kimmel. That's amazing. So, I, you know what? Then that gives a question to me for the filmmaker and fans, uh, friends that also watch this. Uh, what are some uh, important lessons you've learned along the way? 
uh, cutting your teeth on, you know, sprinkle cupcakes uh, that you would suggest uh, to those fans, uh, filmmakers uh, that are watching this as well. And uh, yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, the biggest thing to me is if you want to direct, you got to direct, you got to make stuff, you got to, you got to just do it. You got to put the hours in, you got to put the reps in, whether that's writing things, whether that's shooting things on your phone that nobody sees, it's just practicing the craft. Um, it's also like watching. I mean, again, I studied film studies. I love movies. So it's watching things, knowing references, seeing what you like, seeing what gels with you. So just, you know, learning your craft and really taking it seriously on that level. And then the other thing is finding your tribe, finding people that want to make the same kind of stuff you want to make, the people that you want to work with. Because making movies and TV is hard. And so you want to make it with people that are kind of on the same page with you and that are willing to be in the trenches and make stuff together. So you just got to find your people. I love that. that. That's why I've connected with you. When checking out your work, then hearing your background as you talked about your work uh, uh, and looking at your site, like kindred spirits, I feel this. So uh, this is probably the wackiest interview I've done recently. I'm sorry, NBC. Check out Say by the Bell. It's so good. Uh, great episode. But I, I'm just feeling Maureen in every way. I'm now a super fan of hers. And uh, oh, thank not just because you so you're here right now. Um, I, I got to ask again, because I learned about Wayne's World and your love for Wayne's World. Party time. Excellent. Excellent. What would you do with that if you could? And we're putting <laughs> that into the universe. I mean, I'm such a huge fan of the movie. I think the second movie, I mean, again, we watched, this is the thing I think also what Say by the Bell is. We like can love stuff. And then now, you know, like, oh, some stuff maybe we wouldn't, we would do different. Just knowing like that we can be cult. Like, I feel like the second one, maybe some stuff is culturally insensitive. So it would be fun to like see those characters again in a day and age where like, you know, you might not be able to, you know, have some of those insensitive cultural things. So yeah. I think it's always fun to see our favorite characters in what is now today. So I feel like I would just place them. I want to see where they are. What's up with Wayne and Garth? I love that. I'm with that. And I agree with you. Yeah. And, and fix some of those things that should be fixed, you know? Yeah. And so I love that. Maureen, this was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I can't thank you enough for your time. Um, I have so much to say. Uh, but I I'll cap it off here because I'm not sure what I, I can do and ask without giving too much away on certain things. But uh, Saved by the Bell, y'all. Streaming on Peacock. Uh, check out the new season and check out the amazing episode that Maureen did. And check out Golden Arm. Check out Fatal Flip. Check out uh, The Prank coming soon. Um, uh, can we throw out some socials so the, the fans that are as fans uh, uh, that are going to be just as much as I am uh, can check <laughs> you out? Uh, how can they follow you and, and uh, do see everything Maureen Barucha? I feel like I'm pretty active on Instagram. So I would, I would follow me on Instagram at Maureen Barucha. There we go. I'll have it in the description below y'all check her out. Uh, I'm honored to be speaking with you and uh, hopefully I can collab with you in the future. Cause again, it's finding yeah. those kindred spirits uh, in this community. Join my tribe. <laughs> exactly. That's how we'll end it. Find your tribe y'all and check out Save by the Bell on Peacock. Uh, it's an amazing show. If you're a classic fan returning to the series again, uh, all of that energy and vibe is still there and updated for the future. Uh, I love it. Thank you you guys. Uh, Marine Barucha, your boy Kuya P, NRW, nerds rule the world. <laughs>